I'm Arash Kamiar with MetroJacksonville.com. Education has been a thorny issue in Duval County since the very first days of consolidation. When the school boards were not concerned with the vital commission to educate all of their students, they were more passionate about politics and education. Racist political ideology was all persuasive by the 1960s, and the schools were the front lines in a geographical battleground that pit race-based districts and areas against one another. Had it not been for a widespread for widespread efforts by a racist system to defund black schools and transfer the money to white schools in the 50s and 60s, the city would likely have never faced the humiliation of having our schools discredited and subject to federal busing. Like other cities across the Old South, even our mayor, Hayden Burns, weighed in to support segregation in restaurants, bathrooms, at water fountains, and most importantly in the schools. The result of putting politics above educa education was and is catastrophic, and the city is still informed by those unenlightened decisions. The direct consequence of racist political ideology led to Duval County losing their accreditation in 1964, and they were not fully accredited again until 15 years later in 1979. Well, disaccreditation triggered a massive exodus of children from families who could afford private school. That pullout established a pattern amongst the middle to upper middle class families that continues to this day. The legacy of policies implemented decades ago are still prevalent and the statistics actually are pretty shocking and reflect an epidemic size disengagement from public school system. Consider this, Duval County has a couple of odd metrics for a city of our demographic profile. Only 25% of households in Duval County have a direct enrollment connection to the public schools. Despite being, a, despite being the country's 13th largest in terms of population. We only have 21st public school enrollment. We rank 27th in studies relating to child well-being. We also have a higher proportion of lower income family enrollment compared to higher income family enrollment than any comparable school system in the country. This reflects some pretty nasty negative realities. There is a complete lack of confidence in our public school system on the part of families that value education enough to pay for it. This exodus from public schools is a direct result of using the schools as a battlefront for political ideology, segregationist philosophy at the time, and it has gone on for three generations. And we keep up segregating, to coin a phrase. The best and brightest students from the most education-driven families are increasingly segregated from the general school population. And once again, our educational system has been frozen on the ground more interested in fighting ideological battles based on politics than it is in adapting to change and making the necessary reforms. It has been 27 years since the last real reform to our school system has been undertaken, that being the implementation of the Magnus School Program. When Herb Sang and, when Herb Sang and Stan Jordan presided over the launch of the Magnus School concept, there were no phones, cell phones, there, were no, there was no internet, there was no such thing as streaming video online. Corporations had computers, but people didn't. The laptop hadn't been introduced to Americans yet. There were no Kindles, iPads, tablets, or online books. The first video store had just opened in Texas. The Cold War was still going on. Since then, the science of genomics, immunology, complexity, and nanotechnology have been invented. Jacksonville has been designated a spaceport, and yet we're still resting on the laurels of how we overcame federal busing and a desegregation lawsuit. I'm Arash Kamiar from MetroJacksonville.com.